honor to be able to present an award to one of my great heroes, James Cameron. I think of you, Jim, as a biologist. Some people think of you as an engineer, which you also are. An explorer. Oh yes, and a filmmaker. <laughs> one of the best in the world, by the way. So I think we're here not to honor Jim Cameron as the artist, filmmaker, game changer that he is in the eyes of most people who know of him and who doesn't know of James Cameron. He certainly has a global reputation for the many films that he has dreamed up and produced. Most recently, of course, Avatar, ta-da! <laughs> one that had overtones of blue. Anyone who has seen Avatar and who knows anything at all about the ocean sees the, the crime waves and the jellies and the other creatures in this fanciful forest that really remind some of us of some of our favorite things. And more will be coming, I understand, with even more bluish type <laughs> creatures involved. So, we're not here to honor Jim Cameron for his creative genius for great productions such as Terminator, <laughs> or The Abyss, or some of the other True Lies, for example. Um, the list is long, and the career on that front is distinguished. But no, I think part of what draws us together here is to celebrate Jim Cameron the explorer, Jim Cameron, the visionary, who uses the engineering and the art and the science <coughs> and the courage to do what others would not have the gumption to take on. It's evident in what it took to make Titanic with a lot of doubters who said, you can't do that. You can't make a film about the ocean actually going out into the ocean and going down to the real Titanic. But he did that with Anatoly Sagalovich with the Titanic. Many trips, I think, Jim, I think you may have made more trips to see Titanic than any other single individual other than Anatoly, who was, of course, piloting the submarines <laughs> on various occasions. And I had the great joy of actually spending some hours at the bottom of Lake Baikal with both Anatoly Sagalovich and Jim Cameron on Jim Cameron's birthday a couple of years ago. <laughs> and again, had an opportunity to witness up close and personal James Cameron, the explorer, James Cameron, the scientist, James Cameron, the visionary, the artist, who doesn't miss a trick about anything. It all comes together in the opportunities where I think what really impressed me the most before your great expedition to the bottom of the Mariana Trench was the little piece you put together for an event at the Aspen Institute a couple of years ago where you took some clips out of Avatar where you saw the blue people standing in front of the heavy machinery just defending their magnificent planet. And just intercutting that with some images that he took with a film team in the Amazon, in, in uh, Brazil, where a giant dam was about to be constructed. And there were the real people standing in front of the real machines defending their real home planet. Well, unfortunately, the dam didn't get stopped. And it was to lead to, what, 27 more dams. And it was just the power of that juxtaposition. Here is the story that conveys a great truth and touches people. The whole film, Avatar, actually does that. It touches people beyond just an entertaining film. It really makes you think about who are we? Where did we come from? And maybe most importantly, where are we going? 
Well, where James Cameron has gone is where only two people have been before and come back. You know, the trick about going to the deepest place of the ocean, you have to come back. It doesn't count, one-way trips. <laughs> Our friend Don Walsh say that a number of times. But here's the thing. James Cameron did not have the U.S. government taxpayers, or U.S. taxpayers, any taxpayers behind him. He actually went out and made films to get enough resources together so that he could do what he dreamed of doing, to design, to fund, to build over eight years a vehicle that he would take him solo to the deepest part of the planet. And it wasn't getting there. It wasn't a stunt. It wasn't to plant the flag. It was to go and demonstrate that new materials, new engineering, and the interest in exploring what's actually there. It wasn't a bounce dive. Neither was it intended, Don, when you went to the deepest part of the ocean. You had a little crack in the machinery that I think propelled you back to the surface somewhat sooner than you otherwise might have gone back. But in this case, the whole idea was to go, stay, explore, document, bring back samples. And the, the trials that led up to that, you did exactly that. And the samples that made their way to Scripps and other institutions have really been, again, a game changer. Who else has been able to develop the technology and then apply it? The sad thing is <laughs> that even though you don't have the support of all the country behind you. You have you, your brain, your spirit to make the basic engineering feat a possibility. And then you actually you know, you build the machine, and then you take the machine, and you go to the deepest part of the ocean, and you come back, and you did not get a ticker tape parade. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't get to meet with the president. You didn't get you know, lots of medals on your chest but you are honored by those who really appreciate what you are doing, what you have done, what you will do. I think that's what we're here to celebrate tonight, to honor you for you as an explorer, for you as an artist, for you as a scientist, for you as a visionary, and one who cares deeply about the future of what we do to this little blue speck in the universe. And on behalf of that little blue speck, the water and all that it contains, I want to thank you. And we are here tonight to express our huh, what can you say? Our our great uh, admiration, respect for all that you represent. And that's it, James Cameron. Bravo.